Welcome back. Long time no see. Been a busy last few months. I've had to finish off sort of like the main bits of the van and then I've had to start work again after lockdown. And um, yeah, I'm back to this van. I've got a few bits left to do uh, and then all the sort of bits around the edges. So some of the stuff I've got left to do are to finish off the diesel eater. I've got to put the shelves in, uh, curtains up, I've got to sort the blinds out, uh, do the uh, edging, there's still a few rough edges which I'm not happy with. Um, I've got like route a few wires, I've put an extra socket in next to the TV so that that can be powered by the battery if I want it to be, but I've got to finish wiring that up. Mirrors, sort of like fan, fancy little bits and bobs really. So today We've got the diesel eater and um, from my last video you'll have seen that I installed it uh, very roughly and kind of got it working. Well, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to get it routed properly now and I've tried routing it from the inside with a like a sort of extra tank uh, and I just don't like it. I think it's a bit messy. Uh, the, the whole idea of sort of going to a petrol station and filling up diesel next to all your cushions and your bedding and sort of like living space uh, the smell of it and you know potential spillages and all that sort of stuff I just don't like it so uh, I'm thinking of what, routing it to my main tank now on four transits uh, Mark 7's as far as I'm aware uh, there is a extra port like an extra sort of like entry uh, into the main fuel tank that's got like a sort of straw that takes the whatever it is that you route into it right to the bottom of the fuel tank or near the bottom so that you don't suck all the rubbish up and uh, by the sounds of it you're supposed to like sort of trim it off and put a, like a sort of grommet on there uh, ready to put your uh, wire in, uh, uh, your pipe into um, so that's what I'm going to do I've got to reread the instructions of where it is because it's been a while I've got to uh, lower the tank, put that in, route it along the bottom of the van and then I'll show you how I'm thinking about routing the pump and all the other bits and bobs. So in case you didn't see the last video, originally I put this there where this flap is. So I actually put it in there, dug right down into my insulation and all that sort of stuff and then looked under the van and realised that it just about was the worst place you could have possibly ever put it. I don't know why I didn't check under the van first, I just started, I just got excited and started it. Anyway, I moved it to here, which was between two like chassis members, I think there's like one around here and one just behind it. Um, and it's alright there, okay, but... I don't like having a tank in here. Now the, the tank that came with the diesel eater I drilled through like an idiot. So I have been using that. And it's just been, I mean it wasn't, it's not all been sort of laid out and sort of resting like this while I've been driving about. But I've just been like sort of taking it all apart again. But it's been going in there, down here, through the filter, through the pump that was mounted by cable ties and brackets where those two sort of screw holes are. Uh, and then it goes down under the floor and up into the diesel eater. Well, that's going to change. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put that and that and all the sort of routing, or just the entire fuel line, under the van. So what I'm thinking is it's going to go from the fuel tank along the bottom of the van, fuel filter, keep going, fuel pump, keep going, and up into this diesel eater here. All right, so... Then my first thought, thought was, because we live in England, and that there is made out of metal, and yeah, I'm sure it's like zinc plated, galvanised or whatever it is, anodised, maybe even some of it's made out of aluminium, let's have a look. Uh, no, it looks like sort of like a... I'm not sure why it's not focusing. Uh, it looks like uh, some sort of plated, mild, 
Looks like it might be some sort of like plated mild steel or something like that. I don't know. Cheap metal anyway. Ch Chinese rip off at the end of the day. And those um, sort of like Jubilee clips, whatever you call them, that I've put on, they're just sort of zinc coated. We've all seen how that sort of stuff from B&Q just goes rusty anyway. And we've got two on that side, we've got two on that side, we've got that there. And then not only that, but in there, the pl little plastic bit on the top, that's where the wiring goes. I don't like the idea of having this cheap Chinese rubbish sort of like just sat there resting underneath the van. So, yeah, I've got an idea for that and I'll show you later on. Okay, so the transits come with these uh, equipment mounting man manual, EMM. Uh, this is for my model <coughs> and basically it explains to you what, you know, what you can do with your vehicle and how to do it properly. Down on page 98, got adding uh, basically a heater to uh, fuel fuel tank there's already a port on there that they've made so I think it's on this page um, one minute I think it was that page right it's one above it there we go so on here this is the fuel tank this is the front of the vehicle and in the middle, there's like this sort of like fuel cap looking area. And that blue highlighted bit is actually uh, an auxiliary port. So this is what it looks like, uh, like as standard, um, on a standard transit. And it's basically just a blocked off port that's sealed. So it tells you, number two there, it tells you to cut the end off. And then to put your heater tube down it. And you're supposed to use some special quick fix, uh, like clamp, it says it down here. Uh, fix a quick fit connector, a fuel line, uh, heater tube. Um, <clears throat> I ain't got that. So for now, I'm going to be sliding it down and in. And then I'll just fix it with some cable ties. Um, and I don't know if you can see, but over there, try and get that focused. That like bit with the orange on and the white, that's like the sender unit. And just to the left of that orange, so as you can see there, we've got that like white nubbing, like poking up at a funny angle. There you go chopped it off. I cut this way so that I didn't accidentally slip into any of those wires. So what's happening here is that's the middle of the harness. I've followed the line along to the diesel pump, snipped it, left this bit inside the van and then this bit I poked, I went outside and underneath the van and I poked it back up underneath so that it is being soldered inside the van. I'd rather keep these connections nice and warm and sort of in a nice protected area. And um, so yeah, that's what I've done now. So just soldering it. Once it's soldered, I'm going to test out to make sure firstly that the pump still works. Um, and then I'm going to see if we can try and bleed the system. Turn that on and the pump's clicking. Don't know if you can hear it. So the pump's clicking, which means down here it should be pulling fuel out of the line and up to there. Right, we've got it turned on, haven't we, Shell? Coming out red hot. So it's all still same inside. That's now running off of my actual tank. Van. So I've got a pipe going up the long bottom of the van. 
not fixed into place yet. And there, he's in the house. What are you talking to? <laughs> talking to the camera. It's nice and warm, isn't it? Should we go and feel it? Ow. Oh, is it warm? <laughs> And warm your hands up. Oh, that's nice, that. What I've got is I've got one of these locking lunch boxes. I've drilled an all and put a rubber grommet in that side. The diesel pump's going to go diagonally and then out of this top side here that you can just about see. So I've made that hole so that it just about fits this rubber hose that I've got through. So this is going to go sideways, like that hopefully, onto like maybe a chassis uh, member and uh, it's going to be attached with a couple of screws and then the fuel pump's going to be inside that hopefully. Uh, we'll see how it works and uh, I'll let you know. Here we can see the final article, so we've got bottom left grommet, top right rubber tube, uh, wire's got a notch cut out for it to sit in, so when the clip top lid's clipped on, it doesn't interfere yet. I've used nylon tubing and some rubber sleeve for the outer. At points where there may have been chances of friction or heat, I've used a couple of cable ties and dangled the nylon tube through that last cable tie so it's actually not touching the vehicle body.